have you ever had the thought, well, this is my money. I mean, how can I tithe? How can I give money to God when it's mine? I don't know about you if you've had that thought, but I've had that thought in the past and in the present. And it really, you know, over time made me kind of think about and really ponder what was my, you know, tie or perception of money. And I kind of had to start at that point of, you know, money is not evil in and of itself. Money is not evil. Uh, even the disciples, even Jesus had to have money. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is the love of money. And what the attention, what the focus, what the choice, you know, to go after money. And money has been one of my stumbling blocks. And not just money in and of itself, but what money, you know, brings. The, the comfort, the feeling of security or importance or power or whatever it may be. So if, if you're caught in that thought process, you know, I... I and I was for a number of years, and at times I still get there, but not as often. But I you know, would argue in my mind, well, if I give my money to God, which you, know, you can see the issue with my uh, initial argument in my mind, it wasn't my money to begin with. But the, the thought process went, well, if I give my money to God, then I won't have the money that I need to pay for the things that I've bought or the things that I want to buy or live the life that I want to because if I take money out of this pile and give it to God, then I'm short. And, you know, it really had an effect on um, my perception. It had a, a huge effect on my relationship with God. It started to affect how I treated others and how I dealt with conflict. And, you know, it's, it's something that I think is more prevalent in people's lives than they're willing to admit that um, they are being defined by material things. Their comfort comes in material things. There's um, dealing with anxiety or stress or depression, um, kind of run to the material things, which is all kind of wrapped in money. And so if you found yourself in that process, you found yourself in the thought process, well, I can't give to God because I have to have all of my money to do these things, then I want to challenge you on is your perception of money, is your relationship with God, is your life where it should be? Are you um, able to sync up God's Word to the life, to the choices, to the personality, to the attitude, or whatever else you want to add in into that, are you able to have uh, that relationship? Are you able to be Christ-like? Are you able to show love to others? Are you able to share the gospel? Are you an example, as Timothy talks about, would someone look at you and say, yes, he or she is a, you know, Bible-believing, Christ-centered example of, yeah, they're a sinner. Yeah, they've got their shortcomings. But overall, you can tell they're trying to serve God. And if money has replaced um, your ability to have that relationship, then you've got to change your relationship with God. You're not going to be able to change your opinion or your need of money until you change your need in your perception of what God means to you in your life. Uh, because when I first went through this process, I tried to, you know, do it on my own. I tried to say, well, if I can, you know, get to this amount, if I've got three months or six months or 12 months or whatever in the bank, then I can start giving, you know, more over to God. I tried to rationalize myself and, and you know, come up with a plan in my mind that would resolve this. And in fact, I just had to step back and say, you know, the country song, Jesus, take the will. I mean, you know, God, this is all yours anyway, and um, I'm going to have to trust you. And at the time, it was kind of a, a, it was a really hard conversation going on in my mind. Now, when I step back and I look into it, it's like, okay, let me get this right. Um, I'm trusting someone that their word is true and that God did send his son to die on the cross, and he rose again on the third day, so that I could accept him as my Savior, be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, go to heaven and escape hell and spend eternity, which my mind can't even fathom, in heaven with God, in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to trust him with my soul, but I can't trust him with my money. 
And when I started to think about it that way, it really started to trigger in my mind of my argument's silly. Because if I can trust God with my soul, my eternal soul, my eternal treasures, the rest of my life, which will pale in comparison to the amount of time I spend on this earth, but I can't trust him that, you know, you know, God hears your meager 10%. What a percentage you want to give. I mean, there's a whole other debate on tithing, and I'm not trying to get into that, but giving back to God, giving God your first fruits, honoring God. Because it's not about money. It's about the heart. It's about the willingness to do it. It's about the willingness to show God that you're thankful and grateful for what he's done. So I want to challenge you on that. I mean, is that where you are in your relationship with money? You know, you can't give it up. You you can't lay it down. You can't stop focusing on it. Yes, you love God. Yes, you love your family. Yes, you're you're a, a morally, you know, decent, ethical, law-abiding citizen of the United States or, or no, another area. I mean, you're a good person on paper, but your relationship with God is not there. You know, so I want to, to challenge you on that. I mean, is what's the real issue, I guess I should say? Is it your relationship with God or is it money? And money is just the symptom. That's what dis is distracting you. Because if it wasn't money distracting you, it would be something else. If it wasn't money pulling you away from God, it would be something else. So money happens to be yours, material things, which was very much my thing that distracted me from God. And we've got to get to a point where we say, you know what? My relationship with God, my relationship, my me putting my trust into God other than my own doings in my bank account, um, you're going to have to make that transition. If you want to live the life, if you want to fulfill the calling that God has put on your life, you're going to have to get over that and start trusting in God. And if you're trusting for your eternal salvation, think about it that. You can trust Him with these you know, tiny little uh, pennies that we have on earth compared to gold streets. So think about that from a logical standpoint. And if I can help you in any way, um, you can find out more about Handling Life at handlinglife.org. I've got a, a free book there called Modern Day Jonah. It's based on my life story. Uh, it's called uh, Stop Surviving, Start Living. Uh, one of the um, subtitles I kind of, you know, messed with was just, you know, st stop uh, running, start obeying. Because that's essentially we're either in in our relationship with God, we're moving towards Him or we're moving away from Him. So if I can help you in any way, or if you want to learn more, uh, if you want to listen to some other podcast, or you want to share this with someone, or you want to write a review, I uh, would love for you to do that because it will help this ministry grow. And it will help um, us show others, hey, there is a way to apply God's Word, to apply your faith to all aspects of your life. I hope this has been an encouragement to you, and I hope you'll share it with others. And if you want to learn more, you can visit handlinglife.org.